What an absolute honor and treat and privilege it is to get to sit before you today in your home from our home. Um, I'm Jamie. And, and I'm Jessica. Hi, Hello. nice to meet all of you virtually. <laughs> and Jesse and I are sisters and we actually live 11 houses away uh, from each other, but we are social distancing for the first time in many years. Anyway, we're so excited to be here with all of you. Um, we've been, we've had the honor to work with Head Starts around the country. And so some of you, we may have met before or worked with you before, but truly having the opportunity to um, share what it is that we know and love and our way of bringing kindness and calm to the world through Head Start is one of the great honors of our career. Uh, what you all do and the energy and the love that you put into the children and the families that you serve is, uh, I normally cry at this moment, but I'm not going to <laughs> right now, but truly it's just, um, thank you for, for what it is that you do and for sharing this hour with us today. What we'll be focusing on today is um, hopefully many of you were able to receive the PDF of the jungle flow that we have, which is an imaginative way to introduce yoga and movement to the children in your life. If you don't have the PDF, don't worry. Um, we'll be sending that out again afterwards as well. But the intention today is just to go through to give you some ideas of ways that you can use simple mindful movement um, right now. Um, and then introduce that to the children virtually because uh, that's the way we're all interacting right now. But then you'll have this skill and this tool that all of the children will have learned separately so that when you come back together, the idea is that you have this new re-entry activity that you can offer together as a group. So that is the intention today. Again, um, know that Imagination Yoga is a program that is safe and accessible for everyone, but you know your body best. Try what feels right, um, but just be uh, thoughtful and mindful about your own body today. And mostly just enjoy and have fun. So should we transition, Jamie? Let's do it. Okay, so um, I would like everyone to find your comfortable seated position, whatever that means to you. It's on your bed, on the floor, in a chair, on a yoga mat, in your kitchen, wherever it is that you are, I want you to just kind of drop in now. And if it feels comfortable, maybe even close your eyes. And we're gonna open up our time together with mindfulness. And when we tap into mindfulness, we were able to drop some of the worries and some of the things that might bombard our, bombard our mind. And the way that we can tap into our mindfulness is through our sense doors. So with eyes closed, I want you to feel the temperature in whatever room you are right now. Feel it on your skin. Feel the floor below you. Notice where your hands are in space. And hear any sounds that are around you, the sound of my voice, sounds of your family, perhaps the sounds outside, just notice. And then if eyes are closed, I want us to set the intention now to open the eyes. But before we do that, I want us to be in awe of what happens when we do that. So on the count of three, slowly flutter, flutter your eyes open, one, two, three, opening the eyes, and those eyes see. And that is something to be very, very grateful for in this moment. So let's take our fingers now, warm up our fingers a bit, and our wrists, and our shoulders. Very nice. And I like to think about when the shoulders come back, this heart space being open. A lot of closed off lately. Let's just reopen. And then round forward and up and back and down. Hands on your knees. One more quick movement together to just get into our bodies. Go ahead and relax your neck. A lot of mental and emotional stress we carry in our necks and so really being mindful of the way that we're holding our necks and our shoulders will be an asset throughout the day and stretching the other side of your shoulder breathing and chin down towards the chest 
and back up to straight. And now everyone, we're gonna begin with our headstands. Just kidding. What would you guys even think of us then? <laughs> Just kidding. No headstands, thank goodness. All of the yoga we're going to, oh my, I know. All of the yoga that we're going to do today is accessible and feel good and promise you no headstands. Okay, Jesse, take it away. Well, we thought we'd just give you a little bit of a background about who we are just really quickly before we jump into it. So um, again, I'm Jessica McClintock, Jamie and I are sisters, and I've been doing imagination yoga with Jamie for the last 10 years so or so. But I started out um, many of the in the same place many of you are starting out, which is I am I was familiar with yoga and I had children at home or children that I was working with. Um, but it wasn't until Jamie taught me the simple, simple concepts that we're going to introduce to you today that I was really able to harness these ideas and, uh, and offer them to, to the children in my life. First to those that were in my own um, family and then to the children that I work with um, in, the, in a classroom setting. So um, this program is truly meant to be accessible. Everything that we're going to talk about today is going to be immediately um, usable for you, whether you're working with children in a virtual setting and eventually when you're back in the classroom um, and in home visits with these kids. So just know that from the beginning, this was something that we believed that everyone could do, no matter where you're starting at from your own personal yoga practice. So that's a little bit about who I am and where, wh where I came from. And I really briefly um, was a preschool teacher, got my degree in early childhood education and jumped right into the classroom. And I also was a yoga teacher. Um, but at that time, there was no such thing as kids yoga, at least how it is now. So I didn't have that in my wheelhouse of how to, I wasn't able to lean into something that already existed. But that first year of teaching that I had was hands down um, the most challenging teaching year of my life. And I had this moment of, I'm exhausted. And I am, I, and, and I don't know like how much of an impact and you know, all of the thoughts that we, can, that we can loop into as classroom teachers. And then I realized that, that if I want them to be calm and I want them to practice kindness and I want them to mindfully move their bodies and I want them to know what concentration means, it's my job to teach them right? I'm, I'm their teacher. And so I decided that very next morning to go into my classroom. And in circle time, I introduced what we're going to teach to you today, the big full yoga breath. And it worked because um, it gave a little bit of space and a little bit of awareness between, um, between feeling frustrated in their body and then a reaction of hitting or shouting or throwing a book or whatever it was. And it was so effective that the administrative team came in because my accident and my incident reports dwindled down, 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 down. Um, the administrative team came in and said, can you please teach this to all of the teachers in our center? And so that began then the sharing from teacher to teacher, which is what we're doing with you today. So that was about 15 years ago. And um, over the last little bit of time, we've had the opportunity to work with hundreds of thousands of, of children, tens of thousands of teachers, and, um, and believe that this is one of the answers to bring kindness and calm and mindfulness into this and resilience into this generation. So great. So just a little background on imagination yoga in general. So Imagination Yoga is a program that was originally designed for children ages 2 to 12. It was created in a preschool classroom. So for many of you, um, the idea of maybe how could children do yoga, um, this was actually created in a classroom, like Jamie said, for those kids that you might be wondering how could they do this. So the program, um, we use imagine it, uh, we use something called imaginative associations, which we'll see, but really it's storytelling. It's one of the reasons that the partnership with Imagination Yoga and the National Head Start has um, gone so well is because this program is so helpful in, in promoting and supporting those, that early literacy skill building. So when you're connecting story and movement, it's helping children to kinesthetically learn, so learn through doing. Um, another thing that the program focuses on is the um, kindergarten readiness. So how can we help to 
um, promote and provide these children with um, self-regulation skills, calming techniques, so that when they move into kindergarten, they'll be ready with their big full yoga breath that we'll teach you here in just a moment. We also focus a lot on calm, concentration, and kindness. And the poses that we're going to specifically talk about today are targeted to how do you have those intentional conversations with children, to not just have a conversation with, about what calm is, but what does calm feel like, and what tools are we providing to these children so that they can find calm in their own, in their own lives. Same with concentration and kindness, that these are skills that need intentional practice, and that yoga and mindfulness provide a lot of um, opportunity to do that intentional practice. So I wanted to show you now, I'm gonna to try to share my screen here. There we go. It's my first time sharing my screen. Okay, so this is what many of you um, should have received or the PDF. So this, um, Jamie, do you wanna chat a little bit about the walk them through this, this adventure? Sure, sure. So, um... And I'm seeing a lot of comments that there's some technical difficulties. So I'm, I'm happy to say that this is being recorded. And if you're not hearing it right now, then hopefully you'll be able to rewatch it back uh, and we'll, we'll get a good solve for all of it. So this is the way a lot of people are like, well, how in the world do you teach yoga to children? And it is through what we call imaginative associations. So each of you will have this to practice and to share with your students, your own family, your own children, both virtually and then as well as when you go back into the classroom. And again, if you have not received this, you will receive this packet with all of the information. So don't worry right now, this is just going to be super interactive at this time. So big full yoga breath. So cute and so awesome. And at the same time, you can teach about what calm feels like in that imaginative breathing session. Move over to the tree pose, for example. Tree pose is excellent for talking about concentration and mindfulness and grounded and resilience. And then buzz over to the last picture with the heart and the word and the thoughts. That's kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts. And that is the what we call being boldly kind. This is our introduction to how we can explain to children that, that they are connected to everything that they that the way that we the way that we interact with each other and the way that we speak and the way that our, our actions matter what we do matters that you matter and so yes this is cute and imaginative and also potent and powerful from the perspective of kinesthetic learning learning while doing so that's that we're actually going to go through that shortly Next up, Jess, you want to do the next one? Right. We're going to, this, I just want to mention too, that this jungle adventure um, can be anywhere from, offer you and your students anywhere from five to 20 minutes of structured physical activity going through this adventure. And to Jamie's point, we'll chat through that in a little bit later. But in addition, we want to mention that this is also uh, provided to you, not just in English, but you'll also have it in Spanish as well, which you can see here. And then what we're going to go through are the adventure or the poses that we're going to be covering today. So each of the pose pages you'll receive, as you'll see, has an image of a child in the pose, um, talks about how you do the poses, when to use them, and why to do them. We're going to experience them now in this workshop, but you're going to have all of these documents um, as a follow-up to help you to offer these to the children later, but also remember in your own life. So we've got the big full yoga breath we'll be doing. We've got tree pose. We've got the frog pose. And then we've got kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts that you see there. So again, those are going to be provided to you. Um, and hopefully, did I, did I get my screen sharing not going? Is it? Oh, you're good. You're there. Okay, good. So the you're screen. So, so technologically sorry. advanced right now. So that was so, that was so much, you guys. That was so good. But it worked. It, it worked. worked. It worked. Yes, it worked. Okay, yeah. it's the little things. Find gratitude in the little things. Okay, so that's what we're going to be going through. And again, um, the reason we wanted to show you that now is however you learn, allow yourself to learn that way. You don't need to write down everything we say. We don't, you don't have to take it unless you've learned that way. But what we really want you to do in the next, um, as we move into the poses, is feel this in your own body. Notice what feels good. Notice what lights you up. Notice what um, you enjoy the most because that 
is where you should start when you begin introducing this to children and families. So um, from there, want to just jump into the poses then? Okay, so we're going to start with the big full yoga breath. And we're starting with the big full yoga breath because that's actually where it started. I, I in my own class, realized that these children needed to understand what it was that I was asking when I said, calm your body down, friends. I can see you're having a big feeling. This was the way to promote that calm from that kinesthetic in my body type of action. So the way that we do this is we bring our hands together at our hearts. And you can have your hands together like this, or if that feels uncomfortable, this, or this, or re really any way that you choose to hold your hands. But it needs to be in this place, and I'll show you why. So hands are together at the heart, and we're going to inhale our breath in. So here we go. And exhale, hands down. Two more, just like that. Great. Last big one. But this time, let's take our fingers, my yoga friends. This is how I would tell the kids in my class. Take your fingers and turn them into your paint brushes. And I want you to dip them into your calm colored paint. So dip, dip, dip. And then bring that calm color back to your heart. And I want you to paint that around yourself. Very nice. And notice the way that that makes you feel now. So that's the way that this yoga pose goes. That's the way that it feels in your body. And now I'm going to tell you a little bit of the integration and great times to be able to do this as well as the why. So um, I brought it in during the circle time. Every morning we'd come together in our community time and we'd each bring hands together at our hearts and we would take our big full yoga breath. But before I did that, we'd have the conversation of, raise your hand, my yoga friends, and I hope that you guys are, I'm imagining you're going to do this all with me. So can I have you raise your hand if you ever feel frustrated? Of course, yeah. Um, raise your hand if you ever feel sad or worried. Yeah, of course, yes. Of course, raise your hand if you ever feel angry. And we raise our hand, but here's the interesting one, teachers. This is the one where kids look around and they're like, am I allowed to say that I'm angry? Am I, because when I'm angry is when I get in trouble. And so bringing in this emotional literacy and being angry is a part of the human experience. It's not only normal, it's just fine, but it's what we do with it next that matters. So when we notice that we're feeling angry, I want you to show me your really mad face. So get your mad face and get your tight body. And I want you to notice, oh, I'm feeling really frustrated in my body. Now bring your hands together at your heart and take a breath. And then notice, nope, still mad. Let's do it again. Notice, oh, I'm actually feeling a little bit better. Let's take one, one more now. Very nice. So yoga friends, at any time of the day, sad, frustrated, big feelings, lots of energy, you can take this big four yoga breath. And teachers, it's excellent for entry of the day, exit of the day, any time that you're feeling like it's loud in your class or at the home visit that you're at, this is the opportunity to be able to come back down to center. Um, oh, there's so much that we could talk about from a physiological perspective, and we've got more trainings that we hope you guys join that really talks about the why and the accessible reasons why this is actually um, calming the nervous system and what's happening even to the brain. But what I want for you all to remember is that it's three breaths, starting here at the heart, big inhale up, longer exhale down, and it is impacting the nervous system and, and taking it from a sympathetic to a parasympathetic nervous place where everything begins to calm down. So that's that. There's about 25 more minutes of why I want to tell you that's good, but we're going to keep moving. One thing I want to add to that for the big full yoga breath is if those of you that are working with children that are younger, like in the zero to, to two age range, if you, if the language of bring your hands together at your heart might seem a little bit too, um, 
more complicated. A really simple way to get children to have their heart, their hands where you're looking for is just simply this. Clap, clap, clap. And then you breathe from there. Just like that. So just another little quick tip for those of you that are working with the, the youngers. And kindergarten readiness. For those of you that, that we're not going to see again, I want for you also, as these children are getting ready to transition into kindergarten, this whole bit in the lunch line might be, uh, or outside of school on the first day of school, might be a little bit not the best for them. So after you teach this to them, I want you to also show them that they can put their hands into their pockets or behind their back. They can do at any time this yoga breath and they don't have to use their hands. So watch this. I just took that breath. It calmed my body and no one knew but me. So I think that's where we'll land that one. Great. All right. So the next yoga pose you'll see I'm standing too. So if you're at home and you, and you feel like it, go ahead and stand on up. The next pose that we're going to do um, is called tree pose. And tree pose is a absolutely wonderful pose for um, practicing concentration. And we all know that in this, for this particular generation, it's very important that we give children an opportunity to practice concentration. So um, what we'll do here is we'll just feel this in our own body. So you can, whichever feels more comfortable, you can bring your feet together, you can have your feet, you know, about hip distance apart, just find a place to stand that's comfortable for you. And then from there, go ahead and bring your hands to your heart. And then bring most of your weight into one of your feet. I'm gonna teach this to you in your adult body first, just so you can feel it for those of you that tree pose is new for. Bring most of your weight into one of your feet. Great. And then what I want you to do is really that foot that has most of the weight, really feel that foot down on the earth. Maybe even close your eyes to give all of your attention, bring all of your mindfulness to the bottom of your foot and what it's connected to. Great. Maybe even feel energy going down through the ground and then allow that energy to come up through your leg, up through your body, really helping you to rise up tall. Great. Once you've got that, strengthen that energy with your opposite foot. Keep your toe down, but you bring your heel to the opposite ankle. This is a beautiful tree pose. You don't need to go any further. But if you'd like to, you can reach your hands up overhead and then if your balance is feeling comfortable and steady, you can bring that leg up onto your office, bring that foot up to the opposite leg below the knee, and we'll stay here in tree pose. Together we'll balance. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands come down, feet come down. Beautiful, beautiful tree pose. Important things there in your own body, and I'm sure you all looked great, but that standing leg was strong and you were standing up tall and strong, just like the trunk of a tree. So we are going to use an imaginative association. And so those are the, the that's the storytelling piece that imagination yoga is kind of known for. So we're not just gonna be a tree in tree pose. Let's imagine maybe to be a flower. That might be kind of fun. So I'm actually gonna have a start a little bit lower. So can everybody come down just like this? This is exactly how I would teach it in one of my preschool imagination yoga classes. I would say, in my hand, friends, I have a magical flower seed. And I have one just for you. And you're going to know it's yours because it comes right to you, because you know the kind of flower you want to be. So before I throw you the seed, close your eyes and imagine the kind of flower you are. What color are the petals? What color is the stem and leaves? And remember, this is imagination yoga, so you can be anything you want to be. Okay, friends, open your eyes. I'm gonna throw you that seed and I'm gonna have you catch it. Ready? One, two, three, go, catch it. Did you get it? I'm sure you did. Okay, take that beautiful seed, plant it in the ground. Plant, 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 plant. Now, you're gonna become that little seed, so you're tucked, tucked down. And then on our backs, we feel a little bit of rain and we grow, freeze. Then we feel a little bit of sunshine and we grow, freeze. And then we notice all around us, all of these other beautiful flowers and we grow, grow, grow all the way up and our petals come out just like this. And then if we're feeling strong and steady in our bodies, we can lift up one foot, keep our toe down and balance or raise up our feet hand a little higher and hold it five, four, 
three, two, one. Feet come down, hands come down. Fantastic. So that's another really great way. We have so many ideas for imaginative associations there, but that's a really great way to help children connect, whether you're, if it's a science co conversation, but anytime that you are practicing balance, you're also practicing and improving concentration skills. So that's important. For those of you that are working with littles, bringing everything into the midline here, hands together, feet together, that is a beautiful tree pose. Hands can come up, that's great. This is where we start, right? And then maybe, whoop, this is where we go next. And then maybe foot comes down and then maybe we slide up. So there's so many places that you can go here, so many options and opportunities. Great, great pose for helping, again, to practice concentration. You can do that when you're standing in line, coming from inside or outside, great for transitions. That is also a great one to do at circle time or really just an activity to stand, freeze, and find your balance, right? So lots of great ways that you can bring that into the classroom. Anything to add, Jamie? No, I think that that's great. Great, okay, so moving on then um, to our third pose, which is frog pose. And the thing about frog pose is, for most children, if you were to tell them, go ahead and turn your body into a frog, they're gonna know exactly what to do. They're gonna drop right down. So if you have any issues with your knees or anything like this, if there's any discomfort here, no need for you to do it, just use that language. Can everybody turn your bodies into a frog body? And they can find that. We bring this pose in because this is a great pose for getting those big wiggles out in a structured way. So which for so many children all over the world, duck inside, this is a way that we can get some structured physical activity, big gross motor movements um, out and help those kids to, to keep moving their bodies. So another great opportunity that the frog pose has is we try to integrate self-soothing into these poses. So one way we can do that is we say, Ping, your fingers turn into paintbrushes and we can paint on this color, the color of the frog skin that we have. We can be so imaginative paint on your arms and your legs, paint your face, whatever color you want, just really paint it up. So that positive connection is very important and this is a great pose to also connect with that. So then what we can do is we'll count to three, we'll rib it and it's important to say, we're gonna jump straight up and frogs always land on their own lily pad and they always land on their feet and they don't jump on their friends. It's a good idea to give those beforehand just so that instead we can, expectations can be set instead of having to correct behaviors after a choice has been made. Just another idea. So we'll do it together. Ready? We're going to jump straight up. One, two, three, ribbit, and down. One, two, three, ribbit, and down. One, two, three, ribbit, and down. Great. So that can be connected to, um, that can be a transition. So moving from one center to another in a classroom is a great way to add that. If it is a rainy day outside and you're looking for ways to get out lots of body movements, you can have um, kids start on one side of the room, classroom or outside space, jumping from one side to the other, another great way to add that in. And of course, this is imagination yoga. So even though it's frog pose, think of any hopping animal and you can imagine to be that. So you could be a kangaroo, you could be a bunny, you could be a cricket, have the, ask the children, what hopping animal do you know? Imagine to be that as you hop, hop, hop your way all the way across the room. Again, finding ways to get this structured um, gross motor movement happening in a way that children can express their big feelings um, and get, those, get that physical movement that they need, but doing it in a positive structured way. Anything to add, Jamie? No, I think that's wonderful. It was such a lifesaver for me, that one in my preschool class, I would have kids hop, 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 hop from circle time to the door or I'd move tables apart and we would just jump from one side to the next and they'd practice taking turns, spatial awareness. I would honor that they've got a big, big body that needs to wiggle and it, it was just a really good one. So our final yoga pose that we're gonna teach you today, in total we have 31 yoga poses that we teach, but today we're going to, going to teach four. And this one is, kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts. And this is one of the most important things that we teach, the big full yoga breath, kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts. Um, 
if you think about your circle time or your home visit, if you begin them with a big full yoga breath and you end your time together with kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts, then you're setting yourself up, you're setting these children up for what it is that you want them to do, which is take control of their, their feelings and their emotions and know that they have a tool to calm down as well as honoring this unique place in, in themselves and in everyone else with both words and thoughts and actions. So join me here with hands at heart. Again, it can look like this. It can look however you're comfortable. So I'm gonna teach it to you now exactly how I would teach it to a group of preschool children. So yoga friends, can I have all of you bring your hands to your hearts, your kind hearts, and look around the circle. Look at all of these kind friends that we have around us, so safe and so respectful and so wonderful. And when we notice this kindness in ourselves and each other, our kind hearts, what type of words do you think we'll use? And the kids will say, please and thank you and will you be my friend? And as the teacher, we're like, yes, yes, yes. Oh my goodness, so much kindness in this room. And then as teachers, we have the opportunity to offer something called bold kindness, which is this. So yoga friends, how about this? Is this a kind thing to say? Stop. Don't talk to me like that. Is that a kind thing to say? And they're like, no. And as a teacher, it really let me know that it was time to reframe this conversation of what kindness is. That it's not just puppy dogs and fairy tales, though it is totally that. It is also standing up for yourself and saying no if something doesn't feel right. And um, taking a deep breath if you need to, or talking to someone if something is happening to your body that you don't want happening. Bold kindness. So we start with kind hearts, which lead to kind words. And if we're using our kind words, yoga friends, then we must be also what? Thinking kind thoughts. You're right, kind thoughts. And kind thoughts lead to kind actions. So let's talk about some kind actions right now. Staying inside, right? Um, not buying all the toilet paper. What else? <laughs> um, practicing together in this space, nearly a thousand of us, kind actions. So let's say it all together. Kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts. And again, kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts, always three times. And let this one be our promise to do our best today, to be mindful of the beautiful hearts around us by both using our kind words, our kind thoughts and our kind actions. So here we go. Kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts. And then you finish your home visit, you finish your circle time, and you send those beautiful little ducklings into the rest of their day. And you now have a platform in which you could come back to. Oh, I can see you're frustrated. What could you have done instead of hitting? You're right, you could have breathed. And you remember our commitment today to each other that we are gonna do our best in our kind words and actions? Yes, of course. You're not in trouble. There's no trouble, right? It's just my job as the teacher to remind you. So nice way to um, implement that in. So now, Jesse, anything you wanna add and then we'll get into our adventure? Nope, that was wonderful. All right, y'all, I'm gonna move this yoga mat back and you remember that jungle adventure, or this camera back? You remember that jungle adventure that Jesse showed you moments ago? Uh-oh, don't look, whoa, that side's messy. Don't look over there. <laughs> okay. So let's begin. Can you all hear me? Yes. All right. So come to your seated position, everyone. And we're going to start off with our three big yoga breaths. So hands to hearts. Two more big breaths. Last big one. Dip your fingers in your calm colors imaginative colors, kind colors, concentrated, mindful colors, whatever you're working on teachers with these children and paint them around yourself and close your eyes. And I want you to imagine now that where we are, there are no walls and there's no ceiling. And I want you to imagine 
that wherever you're sitting is actually not a yoga mat or a floor at all. It is the jungle. Open your eyes and look down. Jungle dirt, everybody. Come on to your hands and your knees. The first jungle creature that we're gonna imagine to be is a warthog. And warthogs have got kind of spiky fur and tusks. So get your warthog bodies on and then put your hands down like this. Can you see? Let's go like this. And we round our backs up. And then we look to the sky and we say, <laughs> and I hope you're laughing on the other end. And round your back up. And look to the sky and say, <laughs> but wait a minute, yoga friends. I heard something up in the mountains. It was a tiger. So come on to your heels like this. And teachers, if this is uncomfortable on your knees, then just sit off to the side. So this tiger has got stripes, right? So dip your fingers into your color paints. Do you have to be orange and black? Or can you be any color you choose? And actually the more colors, the merrier, am I right? So dip your fingers into your paints and paint on your stripes. And like Jesse mentioned, self-soothing, right? The sensory stimulate your own soothing of yourself. And then stick your tummy to your legs. Hide your face. You're a tiger in your cave. Take one claw out and another. And on the count of three, bring your body forward and roar. One, two, three. Lunge your heart forward and we say, Rawr! tuck your toes, pop your tail in the air, and then walk your feet towards your hands or your hands towards your feet and begin to grow up, up, up into a jungle tree. I'll bend my knees. Actually, I'll keep my legs straight. Jungle tree. Remember what that looked like with Jesse? Put your foot here and switch sides and take a breath. But wait a second, I hear something in the base of our tree and it makes this sound, ribbit. Who makes that sound? You're right, a frog. So everybody come on to your hands and your feet like this. On the count of three, we're gonna jump and land straight down. Do we jump into our friends? No, of course not. Do we jump off of our carpet square, our yoga mat, wherever it is? No, we stay right here. On the count of three, one, two, three, ribbit. And again, one, two, three, ribbit. And last time, one, two, three, ribbit, and splash into the water. But as we splashed into the water, we looked over and we saw a jungle snail. The jungle snail, bring you closer now. Everybody sit back on your heels like this. And put your snail shell on your back and rest your head forward. And teachers at home, if the floor feels kind of far away, you can stack your fists like this. You can spread your knees apart, whatever feels right. And I want you to stay here. I'm going to roll up, but you stay in your child's pose, your snail shell. For three, two, one. Very slowly, roll your bodies back up, up, up. And guess what, yoga friends? Our time together and our adventure together is coming to a close. But does it mean that we're done being calm or that we're done being kind? No, it doesn't. It actually means that this is our reminder and this is our bridge into the rest of the day of kindness, calm, mindfulness. So please bring your hands together at your hearts and say with me now, kind hearts. And once we honor that space in each other, right? then it's so much easier, space in each other and ourselves really, then it's so much easier to share that with our words and our actions. So join me here. Kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts. And again, kind hearts, 
kind words, kind thoughts. Last time, kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts. The best in me and Jesse honors the best in you. So that is what a little bit of structured physical activity can look like. The poses that we showed you, this is such a um, sped up version of what this is. Normally we go into great detail about the physiological benefits, the social emotional benefits, the all of the benefits and tons of imaginative associations. So just know there's so much more in each one of those poses and that they really are a standalone activity each pose or you can clump them together in this imaginative movement place and again in your packet that you either have or will receive you will get that jungle flow both in english and in spanish so may that be of benefit to you share that with parents take it to your home visits teach it virtually with your students right now um, you're welcome yes somebody wrote thank you so much i'm so glad so my sister somehow has is lost in space. So I'm going to talk to you now about what's next, except she has that on her computer. So what is next is you're going to receive that implementation and, and how to bring this into your classroom after the fact or into your home visits after the fact. We hope that we've given you some ideas of um, of how to use them now virtually. Breath, virtually, frog pose, teaching that to the parents, um, just helping the children get their big wiggles out, kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts, to end the day, to start the day. And tree pose to talk about balance and grounding and rooting and mindfulness and concentration. So there's that. The other piece of this is if you enjoyed yourself, which we really hope that you did, we actually have a virtual training that's launched. It's 10 hours, work at your own pace. Um, and it, it goes into not just the mental wellness and the, and the physical wellness of the students and the families that you serve, but also you. It goes into resilience in this unique time. It's 10 hours of continuing education that will support you first, right? Because we cannot give what we don't have. And if we're feeling hopeless and discouraged and overwhelmed, then, then how can we be our best selves to be of best service to the world, which is truly what the world needs right now is us at our best. So it really dives into the wellness for you all. And then it goes into hours and hours and hours of how to bring this into your classroom, um, mental health, how to bring this home. It goes into thought work and positive mindset for you and how to share that with students in your life. Um, it's wonderful. It's our, it's our life's work put into 10 hours. So we really hope that all of you enjoy it. And then there's actually, we've made a special group um, rate for Head Start teachers. And so if you are interested in having more than just one of you do it, then contact us, it's all in that packet and we'll be able to get you and the teachers and the parents and the people inside of your agencies to um, take this. And it's virtual too. So Jesse and I will go back and forth with you and watch the poses and do introductions and we would be so happy to have you guys join us. The other thing that we do is we've got a Help I'm Exhausted um, webinar that we're offering to agencies, two hours, also information in your packet and we've got a raising a resilient generation because yes please right so um there's all of that and i think yeah i'm seeing people how can we get that packet fernando that packet is coming to them through email it's coming to you i think that he's posted links up here a handful of times so all of that information is there. And um, man, this felt like it went really fast. We have a handful of minutes left. We're gonna answer questions, but I just wanna say to you that I love you and that what a wild time that we're all in, but I, I, believe, that, um, I believe that there's something special also happening right now. And so being at home and learning and growing and kind of like that butterfly in the cocoon stage using this 
um, transitional time for transformation is, I think, what's actually happening. And just like that, my big sister's back. You guys. Jesse, that was crazy. I, pulled apart, I pulled them all of it. I think I gave them the goods. Will you show them your screen share, though? Yes, I will. I will show them the screen. I apologize for that, everybody. Here we go. This she is a screen one. share. She wanted, she, went, she left to go get a snack, and we know it, Jesse. Yeah, I was just needing to take a break because this is <laughs> so important and amazing. So this is, this is what we'll be sending you at the end. Um, uh, and just wanted to show you that within this document, we've, we've put links here. So you'll be able to click links if you have questions about the continuing education opportunities, you want to learn more. Um, there's the Why Kids Yoga page, additional resources to connect with us to watch additional train, um, watch additional classes. Free, um, and free then kids. Free kids classes. Also, we've got visual aids and posters. If you liked what you saw, we actually have those available laminated too, if you like to reuse them. And in this time of sanitizing, it's nice to be able to, um, to wipe those down and, and get those clean in between uses. But our hope is that, Jamie, did you talk about the, um, let's see here, stop this share here. Did you talk about how um, that everybody can use this PDF now at, at home? Do it. Okay, so our hope is that um, with you having this PDF now that you will be able to share it with your families, email it to them, get them that document so that the children and you can, I, we know so many of you are interacting um, through the telephone and using, using whatever means that you can. So our hope is that these kids will have this document, you'll have it too, and that you'll be able to connect with them and they can move their bodies. And then when the kids come back together, they will all have learned this and they will have this shared thing in common. And then no matter what their first language is, English or Spanish, they're going to be supported with these documents. So everybody is included. Um, so again, if you enjoyed this, we have so much more. This is truly just an introduction. And um, this has been an absolute joy. Should, did you have anything you want to add or should we answer some questions? I think that now would be a really good to answer some questions. I do though want to see, say that all of these kind words and comments coming in, thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's been so nice to look up and see all of this kindness because we're, you know, very socially distanced right now and to be able to connect with you even this way. Turns out this social media thing or this virtual thing is helpful. So thank you for all coming. It was also yeah, kind of funny question. too. Jamie oh. and I stand in front of people all the time and, and speak at conferences and speak at agencies and schools and school districts. And we always wonder what the people listening are thinking. But with this chat, we get to know. It's kind of fun. It's kind of fun to know what you all think. And thank you so much for your kindness. So, so yeah, Fernando, let's... Fernando, how do we get to see questions? Down do we click the Q&A? Yes, uh, thank you, Jamie and Jessica. Uh, before we jump into the Q&A, uh, just wanted to uh, make some things clear for folks. So they're asking about the PDF, which is currently not on our website yet. So what's on our website is the follow-up document that Jessica just showed you. So you can go to the link that I'm about to post on the chat right now, and there you can get your certificate for this webinar, as well as uh, you can download that contact sheet that they show that has all the links and all the contact information. As soon as I get a hold of the PDF, I will put it up on our website. So make sure you hold on to that link and you'll be able to get it. And we will also send a follow-up email to all attendees tomorrow uh, containing all this stuff in there. So um, that way we want to make sure that you don't miss out on, on these great resources. Great. Wonderful. Fernando. In terms of the Q&A, um, you can pull it up on, on there. I, I'm also happy to go down the list and read you what I've gathered so far. So the first question I see here is from Jessica and she's asking, does, Imag does Imagination Yoga have a similar adaptation for infants and toddlers? Yes, we, in our, in our virtual training, we dive a lot deeper into, Imagination Yoga is two to 12 is our wheelhouse. That being said, I taught my daughter when she was one to do the big full yoga breath. And there is a way to adapt it, not just from the way we present it, but also the way we don't follow so much of a storyline as much as it is just playing yoga. So you're this animal and then that animal and then riding on the train and then you're a snake and then you 
jump like a frog. So we've, we've spent a lot, a lot, a lot of time offering this in those toddler classrooms and oh my goodness, I know it's for them, but it's also like, like the best thing for the teacher too. It's so cute to watch. So yeah, great question. I see here, I wanna put this in our Google Classroom so parents can do them at home. Would that be okay to pass it along? Yes, please. Share the love, share, share, share. For frog pose, it is, is it okay to lay feet flat on the floor? Yes, it is. My feet were flat on the floor. Jesse's were up in the, Jesse's heels were up and that has nothing more than to do with just skeleton and ankles and the way the ankle bones are, so yes. How can I explain yoga to, ch to a child? Yoga's literal, literal translation is union. So teacher to student, breath, body, connection. Um, when I say hop like a bunny, kids automatically change their body position. Is there something inherent in frog pose that makes it the best? No, this, that's a great question. Just jump. Jumping is hard and physical and gross motor skills. That's just like that, just jump and jump and jump and jump. Um, Jess, you wanna answer some? Let's see. Can you model how you would respond in the moment when kids say no, saying stop is not kind? Um, the exact way that I say it is actually saying no at times will be the kindest thing that you'll do for yourself and the people around you. And that no at times is brave. You can talk about it because you know the context of like, no, you can't have this toy, you know, like whatever it is, but we, but Sometimes saying no and stop are exactly what the doctor ordered. Mm -hmm. one, one that I'm seeing here is um, they're looking for the, the packet of information and um, the link to the 10 hour uh, virtual class. So the packet of information content will actually be emailed to all of you after this. And the link to the actual, to our, the 10 hour virtual class that would teach you how to become a certified imagination yoga teacher is available at imaginationyoga.com. And what if you are, um, what if you're a teacher that can't squat, that's totally fine in regards to that frog pose. Again, that language of turn your body into a frog, children just know what to do. Some of them will actually say, thank you. I've been waiting all day. They love it so much. Um, can we do this with children two to three? Yes, absolutely. I have a three-year-old that I have a three-year-old here and we do it all the time. Um, what if you have a teacher who can't squat? then don't ever, then don't squat. We never want to, there's already enough stress right now. If there's physical, that if yoga is causing physical stress or any of the postures don't, then those are not the ones to do right now. Mm -hmm. Another great question that just came is, is do we have to be certified to do this type of yoga? So what we've just taught you, we hope very, very, very much that you go out and offer to all of the children and the families that you work with going forward. That certification that we have is just that virtual class that we have um, that gives you even more information. So um, Jamie and I like to say there's very little that we say no to. The hope is that you are sharing movement and kindness and concentration and calm. And whatever you know, we hope that you share. So you don't have to be certified to teach this. Um, but if there's more you'd like to learn, we have so much more to teach. Um, do we speak Spanish? Just a little bit just a little bit, but we do have a lot of Spanish speaking teachers. And if you are a Spanish speaking teacher and take this virtual training with us, we would really love to film some classes in Spanish to be able to offer to the children. So just talk to us if that sounds interesting to you. Mm -hmm. That 10 hour, that 10 hour, someone said, when is a 10 hour instruction going to be? And it's available right now. It's something that can be accessed. There is a fee associated with it, but Jamie and I um, have worked um, are offering a, uh, a discount to Head Start agencies. So if you are interested in having multiple people within your center or agency or district um, go in to learn how to do this together, there are, um, there's a discount that we're offering. You can have access, you'll find out more about the pricing um, in that follow-up sheet that we gave you. There's actually a, a link to an order form that will give you that bulk price discount. And if you, however, personally are like, you know what, I just want to do this and I know I want to do that, you can actually go to imaginationyoga.com right now. It's on the homepage. You'll click learn more and you could actually register and be take, begin taking that class in 15 minutes if you wanted to. It's there for you right now. 
Jesse, will you speak to the yoga poses be modified for children with disabilities? Yes, absolutely. Take so that. we've worked, absolutely. We've worked with children um, that are see, sight impaired, children in wheelchairs, children that have um, all types of different abilities. And what we like to say is if you're doing imagination yoga, you're doing it right. So that sometimes means that for some children, they're just sitting amongst their peers participating um, in whatever way their body allows them to, and that that is beautiful. Um, truly there are, we talk more about in the virtual training, there can be specific things. And we actually have done entire trainings with um, special education departments where we get into specific modifications that can take place for these different poses depending on um, different needs that children have. But truly, children know their bodies and if they are just encouraged to move in the way that feels best to them, they're doing it right. And, so, and you're leading them correctly as the teacher. The, it says the PDF link tells me the site can't be reached. Um, I'm not sure why that is. I'm hoping that's not for everybody. Um, but imaginationyoga.com should be working. Is yoga a religion? No. Yoga comes from India. Um, it is, it's, I mean, you're speaking to the founders right now. There's absolutely zero religious connotations. It's also been supported by the California Supreme Court that it is a secular physical activity. Yeah. So thank you so much. Any way to get the benefits you talked about? Yes, go onto our website and right. why, why kids yoga uh, why kids yoga page goes through a ton of listed benefits that you can read through and share with your families as well. And do we have to be certified to do this type of yoga? Absolutely not. Please go share breath, share movement, share kindness, share mindfulness. And if you do want to become certified, we've already talked about that, but no, please go share. And we love you. And what else? I think that's it. Thank you. This, this was, was an absolute pleasure and we so appreciate it. And thank you to Ed. Thank you to Fernando for making this happen. And thank you to all of you who took your time today to sit with us and learn and share yoga and mindfulness with children in your lives. It's an honor. And it says, I think we'll close with this one. Overall, what's your favorite yoga pose? Kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts. <laughs> so with that, kind hearts, kind words, kind thoughts. We hope to see you again someday. And hey, world family, we're going to get through this. And resilience is not about bouncing back. It's about bouncing forward. So let's move through this time with mindfulness and grace and kindness and, um, and letting our just ourselves have the big feelings if we need to. And just learn and be interested because this is a moment in history that we're currently experiencing. So let's just be interested. So thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of your day.